Welcome back to this special storm edition of 12 Days in March. Snow Day on campus means a video recording session here at home. This will be a first time effort using questions to highlight keyboard derivatives. Here is the first question in this two question series. Pause the recording here and ponder your response focusing on whether the question options ring any bells. If so, which ones? Here is part two in this question series. Think about your answer and then we'll return to discuss both questions. Hit the play button when you are ready to review. The first thing we notice is the patient presenting for a routine preoperative evaluation. She is not sick, dying, or dead. Her labs are remarkable for striking reduction in the MCV with a relatively mild anemia. In reviewing the lab, your focus should really be on the low MCV and which of the microcytic conditions are seen on a chronic basis, as in, she's been anemic forever. Just to be clear, if the vignette states that someone's always been anemic, guess what? It means they've always been anemic. So the next step is to consider the common microcytic conditions. Here they are. Lead poisoning manifested by sideroblastic anemia is omitted from this discussion as it is low yield, but be on the lookout. In discussing the differential of microcytosis, I do emphasize the presence of hypochromia because, as discussed in the spherocytosis video, those patients have microcytosis, but they are not hypochromic. So which of these are most likely in a patient devoid of other signs or symptoms of disease, and how will they be expressed on the peripheral blood smear? And here is your answer. Target cells consistent with the diagnosis of thalassemia. Recall target cells reflect cell membrane synthesis in excess of hemoglobin. In thalassemia, we have a problem with the globin chains, not production of cell membrane. Just to review the other options quickly, basophilic remnants are the cytologic description on red blood cells seen with Howell Jolly bodies and asplenia. Asplenia complicates sickle cell disease. In fact, choice three is sickle cell disease described by crescent-shaped cells. The MCV in sickle cell is described by normochromic normocytic anemia, not a very low MCV as seen in this patient. Cytoplasmic inclusions are the cytologic description seen with Heinz bodies. They are seen only on special stains and represent denatured hemoglobin, characteristic of G6PD deficiency. So why isn't it iron deficiency anemia or anemia of chronic disease? First of all, these weren't offered as options. If they were offered, the vignette would have needed more information. And what do we expect to be described in anemia of chronic disease or iron deficiency anemia? For iron deficiency anemia, I wouldn't expect this to be present her whole life. Further, there was no condition associated with chronic blood loss, such as GI or menstrual bleeding. Insofar as what we see in anemia of chronic disease, there is usually only a minor decrease in the MCV, perhaps in the 75 to 80 range, and the patient would need a chronic disease. That history is not offered, so thalassemia best fits this vignette. Insofar as electrophoresis, you do not need to be an expert but you do need to appreciate the different hemoglobins and how the defect in thalassemia impacts your synthesis. In alpha thalassemia, the beta chains are normal. You are simply making less hemoglobin A due to deletions in the alpha gene. Consequently, the phoresis is normal. That is, you don't ramp up A2 or hemoglobin F. There are plenty of beta chains. No need to employ delta or gamma chains. So here are a couple of electrophoresis patterns to be familiar with. The normal one is labeled. You can see on the left, hemoglobin electrophoresis, a patient with beta thalassemia. That is a deficiency of beta chains. In that instance, delta and gamma globin chains are ramped up to combine with the normal alpha chains. We see a diagnostic pattern, elevated hemoglobin A2 and elevated hemoglobin F. This is not, and I repeat, not seen in alpha thalassemia. I do include sickle cell for completeness. Depicted here is sickle trait. Instead of two beta chains, one of the chains has the valine substitution that we call hemoglobin S. The patient is still making some hemoglobin A. In sickle cell disease, with two defective beta chains, there is no hemoglobin A. Sickle cell is discussed in greater detail in a separate video. The other take home on the thalassemias is the genetic basis for the disease. 
Beta thalassemia is characterized by point mutations. There are literally hundreds of different mutations, but what they share in common is abnormal messenger RNA that leads to splicing, transcription, and translation issues. This slide is from the thalassemia lecture. It underscores the multiple mutations associated with beta thalassemia. There is no one characteristic mutation, so they ask about the common denominator being abnormal messenger RNA splicing and the downstream consequences. Compare and contrast with alpha thalassemia, two chromosomes and four genes. The operative phrase with alpha thalassemia is gene deletion. You can delete one, two, three, or all of the genes with different clinical manifestations. The number of deletions characterize the severity of the disease. This just summarizes what those deletions look like. One deletion is not clinically detectable. Two deletions characterize the trait. Three deletions give rise to hemoglobin H, made up of four beta chains, and four deletions is incompatible with life, characterized by hydros vitalis and hemoglobin BARTs, which is composed of four gamma chains. So what was the diagnosis in our patient? Microcytosis with a normal hemoglobin electrophoresis and a minor anemia is most compatible with alpha thalassemia trait. In reality, iron studies would be obtained to confirm the lack of iron deficiency. If anyone is still awake, we can try another question. As a general rule, if I fall asleep reading a hematology question, the answer is usually thalassemia. Work on this question a bit. Very important question with lots of tomfoolery. Advance if and when you dare. Here is part two of this question set. This is a high yield question for the boards. We'll review it shortly. Please let me know when you are ready to advance. Actually, that's stupid. How can you tell me? This is a recording. Let's start this one by analyzing the stem. The patient is 65 years old, so is at risk for cancer, and if this is a woman, she would be postmenopausal. Morocco just spices it up a bit. Get it? Morocco and spicy foods? Mid-epigastric pain and alcoholism equals pancreatitis. A six-month history of diarrhea in an alcoholic with pancreatitis suggests malabsorption. The emphasis would be on fat-soluble vitamins. The ones associated with bleeding or anemia would be vitamin K deficiency with decreased production of clotting factors and vitamin E deficiency with hemolysis and neuromuscular symptoms. So anemia and ataxia might be relevant. Ataxic gait can also refer to chronic alcohol use, B12 deficiency, or vitamin E deficiency, as just mentioned. But at the end of the day, we have anemia and need to know why. We're given some electrolytes and renal function. Anything abnormal? No. It just tells us the patient does not have chronic kidney disease as a basis for the anemia, and the calcium is normal in the setting of belly pain, so mercifully we aren't dealing with an MEN1 syndrome. Let's get rid of this. Okay, bros, here is the money. You know I'm getting manic when I start tossing around bro, but I've been up since 4 a.m. on this no day. What are we seeing and what aren't we seeing? Who wants to go first? Joe, how about you? What don't you see? Booyah, no target cells. Goodbye, thalassemia. Does anyone see any macrocytosis? I don't. Goodbye, B12, folate, and chronic liver disease. Okay, Jackie, tell Joe what you do see. Booyah, hypochromic cells. There is no lymphocyte to compare for size, but hypochromic cells on step one equals microcytosis. So bro, these are microcytic hypochromic cells. This is a must-know smear. End of discussion. Bulletin board material here. This slide is included in your tuition. Nothing personal, but the differential diagnosis didn't change. It is just as before, but thalassemia is out because it puts me to sleep we just did one of those, and there aren't any target cells. We either have low iron levels as in iron deficiency, or the iron is trapped inside the cells as occurs in anemia chronic disease. Now let's go back to our options. We need something that causes hypochromia and thereby microcytosis. Enzyme deficiency equals G6PD deficiency. We should see hemolysis and bite cells. None noted, and G6PD causes a normal chromic, normocytic anemia. Cytoskeleton abnormality refers to spherocytosis, and although this can result in microcytic cells, they are hyperchromic, not hypochromic. They lose the essential pallor. Point mutation refers to thalassemia characterized by target cells. Portal hypertension gives rise to cytopenias, but not hypochromia. 
Failure of DNA synthesis would be the language of folate and B12 deficiency. Those cells should be macrocytic and most definitely aren't hypochromic. The answer here is choice six, iron deficiency. Iron deficiency is expressed as a failure to synthesize heme. The globin chains are fine. As for this vignette and alcohol in Morocco, all tomfoolery. Why? Because data trumps all else. Vitamin E was a great theory, but there were no options about this, and vitamin E causes hemolysis, not hypochromic cells. You're dead in the water if you did not appreciate this smear. Here's part two. We're given an erythropoietin level. It is included to remind us that anemia is associated with a decrease in the oxygen content of blood. The class of 2020 should be all over this by now. The low oxygen content is sensed by our normal functioning kidneys with an appropriate upregulation of EPO and red cell production. So they want to know the pathogenesis of her iron deficiency. Of note, IV secretin will confirm chronic pancreatitis, but it won't tell us about the iron deficiency. Liver biopsy will confirm this gale has a problem with alcohol, but it won't tell us about the iron. Bone marrow will demonstrate decreased iron stores, but it won't tell us why the iron is low. Of all these tests, colonoscopy is the only test dedicated to finding a source of iron loss, that being occult blood loss from a GI malignancy. And this concludes the Winter Storm edition of 12 Days in March. The two videos produced today focused on the topic of microcytosis. Unlike this storm, microcytosis isn't going away anytime soon. Please contact me if you have any questions or concern about the material presented. Thank you.